Welcome to Metro Casting. I'm Doug Farley. Behind me is a home that's becoming rather well known in Berwick, mainly because of its bright purple color, but also because of the person who lives there. World renowned psychic medium, Charlotte. And we recently got the chance to sit down with her to find out more about her abilities, as well as herself, and of course, the big purple house. Psychics or mediums are people who claim to be able to foretell the future or who say they can see things beyond the normal human scope of perception, things such as spirits and ghosts. Known in the past as oracles and mystics, seers, soothsayers, clairvoyants, spiritualists, and yes, even prophets, psychics have been around almost as long as man has inhabited the planet. Locally, one of the most well-known is Shirlette Inama of Berwick. Shirlette lives and works out of her big purple house on 2nd Street, which is a well-known historical site in its own right, as it was originally belonging to Judge Evans, who as a banker and lawyer in the late 1800s, helped to mold Berwick into the community it is today. Now, many of Shirlette's visitors say they just want to see what the house looks like inside, and we will give you a brief look inside a little later in this episode. In the meantime, though, we want to know more about Charlotte's abilities and how she first came to understand them. Well, I've been able to see spirits since I was a little girl. Um, my mom said it was when I was seven. She said I would sit and I'd be in my bedroom playing and talking to people she couldn't see. Um, and she was a little nervous about it. And then I would tell her things like the one day she was looking for a key, she couldn't find her car keys. And, you know, I don't remember all this like she does. She, you know, she didn't forget nothing. <laughs> um, and she said, I walked up and I told her that David, I guess the little boy I was talking to that she couldn't see, said that the keys were laying out in the driveway and she walked out and there they were. And um, so she was a little bit freaked out with me because I, and I'd go into dazes and I'd tell her about stuff happening in wars and tell her the man from the war told me and yeah, she was a little, um, uh, didn't know what to do about it. I, I was seen by some doctors <laughs> because you have to remember, you know, it was hard. She didn't have that ability. She was spiritual and very open-minded. She was very, very religious, um, but she didn't know quite, you know, how to wrap her head maybe around it. Um, and then, you know, we were very lucky that people started to come through a little bit for me and help me with it. And, and we realized what it was, you know, I was very lucky on that. Uh, when I started the school system, uh, I would see spirits following certain people around. Every once in a while, they're, you know, which is natural because they're everywhere, but there'd be groups of them. And whenever I see groups of spirits following somebody around, I noticed something would happen to them, whether it was a car accident or, 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 or something would happen with a disease or illness, or they'd be, you know, have to get taken to the hospital and they get really sick, like something within that 24 hour period. So I started trying to warn people and, and, and trying to tell them what I was seeing. And I was very accurate, and that caused a lot of problems in the school system because they, I guess at that time, when I was younger, thought that I could do something to them, but it was not about that. I was actually trying to save their life, but they took it the wrong way. So what do the spirits look like to you? Well, sometimes they look very, very uh, in form, solid, like they were and they were living. Um, I know I'll be driving my car and I'll see a bunch of them on the road and I used to actually have trouble driving. I didn't drive till I was older because they'd be all over the road and I thought I was going to hit somebody. And everybody obviously with me thought I was totally gone upstairs because I kept slamming on the brakes. <laughs> There's times when you can see through them, you'll see an outline, but you actually can see what they're wearing. Like, uh, like recently, I was out on my porch and you know this is the old Judge Evans mansion. He was one of the judges in 1880 in this area. He's very well known, very prominent man, did amazing things for the community. And I seen his wife, I think it was her very clearly, a lady named Anna. She yelled Anna to me and she actually was walking towards me if I could see through her but she had a beautiful Victorian gown on. Her hair was up, a very pretty dark haired woman and she actually went right into the bushes out front and then was gone like a mist. So sometimes, you know, that's how I see them as well. They're not as solid. And then there's also orb form. Um, a lot of people come to me and uh, they'll bring photos and they want to know, what is this like Mr. Bubble looking um, thing in their pictures? And what people understand is that's a spirit. When we pass over um, out of the human shell, we pass into... Um, the electromagnetic frequency 
of the spirit world, which is a 34 frequency. It's a ley line frequency. And when we pass into that, um, we're kind of very small at that point. What people don't realize is the soul isn't in you, you're in it. That's why I can see R's and there's R's around people and they're always spinning and moving. It's like you're in a big giant colored hamster ball. I think that's a better way I can explain it. But when you pass, when you pass, it kind of implodes into itself and it comes in through the chakra field, which is the first layer of the soul, and it comes up. That's why people see the tunnel motion, they see the colors when they're coming out. It comes up from the hair up through the crown out and it's very small at that point. Now, as a spirit uh, can get energy, and the way they have to do that is to drain energy from our auras or for, from any electrical magnetic source. What people don't realize, but some do, it, it's getting better and people are learning more about this, is that we're all made of electrical magnetic frequency. We're all walking, like walking giant light sockets, literally. Um, and when you pass, that doesn't change, and you still need energy you need to get that energy for manifestation to become solid form a spirit taking a more solid form according to Charlotte means that entity is drawing a lot of energy in order to communicate in some way and as to why some spirits appear in not too pleasant forms well Charlotte says a lot of times they appear in the form in which they died but they can as time goes by learn to alter that appearance into something less scary some of the cold cases that I've worked on we were able to find uh, the bodies and get a better prescription of, of or I should say description of what they looked like because they appeared to me as when they were killed even though they would have been you know what people presume is much older today do you see what I'm saying uh, they can manipulate that. I've done readings already for clients and had people that had died that were very old when they died, but they actually appeared to me and told me their names very young because that's how they wanted to appear and show themselves. Um, so, you know, I think they can draw enough energy to be able to, you know, appear as they want or what, I guess it's their will. It's all part of the will and, and be able to will that. Uh, however, um, many of them do appear as they looked at the time of death. And we have many people that come to us that, um, you know, they're very nervous if they are sitting in their living room and somebody with no head walks through the room. It kind of gets some attention. Um, and then they don't want to be there anymore. But sometimes it isn't somebody trying to hurt them. I think people get upset too quickly and misconstrue it. Uh, many times it's just the spirit trying to communicate and they don't mean to do that. That's just their memory. And they're not developed enough on the other side to change that as of yet. But in time they are. Are they aware of modern times that we're in versus say somebody that was died a hundred years ago are they aware that uh, things have changed absolutely not and I'm glad you asked that many of them know I've had spirits come to me because there's spirits around me whereas people around me are not because I can they know I can see them and the ones that do know they're a little bit more advanced that can communicate with me uh, will tell me, hey, I need you, this, you know, I was raped, they put my body here, I need you to help me, and they'll be really aggressive with it. I've had spirits already keeping me up for like days on end, they wouldn't even let me sleep because they wanted help, but here they were killed in like 18, well, the one I'm thinking of, 1813, um, and obviously the killer's dead too, and there's nothing we can do about that at that point, but that does happen. Many times they, they're reliving it as it happened. Um, whenever they're stuck, it's called a loop. And whenever they're stuck in a loop and they keep reliving it and reliving it, you can help them if they'll listen to you. But it's all about them listening to you. But sometimes people get the feeling like you can just walk in and, and, and throw some, you know, holy water, which does help. Don't get me wrong. It's an amazing thing to do. But that they'll all leave. But they don't all do that. Sometimes they can leave on that, but they don't all leave on that. Um, and especially if it's a trauma, they're still there. And uh, sometimes you have to get more, and believe it or not, I level with them and try to get them to, to, to see you. I think that's a better way to put it. It's, it's, it's actually odd how this works because, you know, people think it's harder to see spirits, but believe it or not, you got to get their attention sometimes on you. They're not paying attention to you. And if you can get them to pay attention to you, um, then you can get them to, to go to the light or call a family member that's passed to come and get them out of there. Um, I'm always a big believer, too, in praying to Jesus Christ um, for help, to help them pass on as well. And if you can get them to do that, that that's a big plus. You mentioned Jesus Christ. This is a good time to bring this up, too. Yes. Uh, there is a stigma about spiritualists. 
uh, that there's the devil and all that stuff like that. You're a praying person. You, you can see your. Oh, I'm very. Actually, I'm very religious. I believe very much in God and Jesus Christ. I am not like that at all. <laughs> and uh, I, um, you know, I, I almost died once, and uh, I had pneumonia, and I was very ill, and they said that they lost my heartbeat, and I went uh, through a judgment, and. Um, Boy, it's it's very real. All I can say is, with my experience and a lot of the people that's come to me that had passed and were sent back, like I was, and this happened when I was young, but it, but it did happen, and it it really changed my life on on my belief systems. I go by what I experience, not what people think or they try to condition on me. I go by what I experience, and I have to say, absolutely, God's very real, and so is Jesus Christ, and I feel um, that it could save a lot of people's lives if they would only trust in that. But not everybody wants to do that. Uh, we're in a, the planet has its own frequency. It's on a 33 level frequency. It's a vibrationary level. Everything's made of electromagnetic vibrations. It's almost like a ley line frequency. Um, uh, when you see energy, um, it looks honeycombed, but it kind of flat lines and it kind of moves. It's all around us. And you can have positive energy or negative energy. That's how I've kind of always seen it. Um, I've noticed uh, negative energy tends to be more redder looking in appearance, where positive energy tends to be more of a gold white color uh, when it's around people or just around objects, around different things. And uh, what happens with the frequencies is, since the planet's on a more low line frequency um, where it's vibrationary level and we're in a human shell, we're in kind of that same consistent frequency. Um, they say it's like a 32, 33 level frequency. Now the fourth dimension, we're in the third dimension. Let me just make that clear. We're living human shell on planet Earth. You know, we're in the third dimension. The fourth dimension is the spirit world. They're, the frequency, like they're all around us, they're like right here, but they're in a, a, a 30, Three, I, I say more higher up, 33, 34 frequency, where we're on a lower vibrational level of that. And they're, they're like a breath away from us, which is quite unique. And, and some people do have a higher vibrationary level, like mine is, where they can see through that and see them everywhere because of our frequency. It, it, and, you know, and you can raise it. You know, everybody has the potential to open up their abilities and be able to communicate with spirits and their loved ones. Everybody has that potential. Um, and I, I'm always a big believer that they really should. If you've ever seen these Star Wars movies, they talk about the Force, you know, may the Force be with you. Well, that is the type of energy Charlotte is talking about. Absolutely. Um, they would be looking for, it's called mana. They'd be looking for that energy field. Yes, it's all around us, but you can consistently tap into it. Um, when I was in the monastery years ago, um, the, the monks were incredible at that. They did it through meditation. Um, and there's many people now that use meditation for that. Even some of the cases I've worked on uh, with law enforcement and families looking for missing people. Believe it or not, even a lot of them were doing some serious meditation. Even two of the psychics I'd worked with on a case years ago, um, we were looking for two girls, and they were incredible with it as well and did very good with it because uh, you can tap into it through meditation because meditation, it's like, like, consider it like a tuning fork. You know, you're, you're, you're vibrating along at a regular frequency, but you raise it like, like you know, when you do, or like when they do the singing bowls and they raise that energy field. You can raise your own energy field. Field. And when you do that through meditation, you can start to tap into that. It's, it's very amazing. People have asked why I haven't come to you and, and done a show about Charlotte and, and why, why, and I kind of felt like I should wait for you to come to me. You told me when we talked about doing this that the spirits are telling you, you need to do more. Well, what is it you're supposed to do more of? Well, I think they want me to bring awareness that they're here, you know, and bring awareness that you can communicate with your family members. Um, I don't know how many people, and I see spirits around people whether they're in here or not, you know, I'll be at the mall and see them, you know, I see them following people around when I'm out to dinner, you know, walking down the sidewalk, you know, because that's just how it is, and, and some of them are so sad, you know, they, they really just want to talk to you, like they, they love you, they miss you, they'll try to come in dreams if you ever have dreams that you're seeing, like your loved ones that's passed and they're trying to communicate with you, it's 100% guarantee they are because they've told me they do that so they don't scare you to death. And plus two, you're at rest and they're able to get a message across. I always tell people, please keep a tablet and a pen by the bed so you can write down everything 
that they tell you in the dreams. It's very important. They could be giving you a warning. But you have to remember, once we're out of this human shell, we see the future very clearly. Um, I may be psychic and be able to do that because I'm on a little bit of a higher frequency, but believe it or not, man, it's like a hummingbird and steroids. Once you're out of the shell, you see for a long distance, you know, everything that's going to happen. It's a whole different world at that point. Um, and they will try to tell you things and communicate. They'll be, they'll mess with your lights because they have to drain energy. So you'll have, you know, your lights will be blinking on and off. Your TV may be acting up. They're making noises or bumping things, making sounds. They're trying to get your attention. That's usually a flag saying, hey, I really just love you and want to talk to you. This, this maybe something's going to happen. It could be good or bad, but they're trying to help you. And I, I just urge people to please listen to it. How are you supposed to tune into these people then if they're trying to contact you, but you don't have that ability? I have a wonderful way to do it, and it's been very successful with many of my clients, a recorder. Um, recorders do record on the higher frequency levels. That's why we're able to get EVPs, which is electrical voice phenomena. You can actually hear them talking. Uh, many of the shows on TV, the, the ghost hunter shows, are very accurate with that. I have hundreds of EVPs. They're very, very amazing because um, you can hear them. What I tell my clients to do is just sit at night in your house, maybe light a candle if you want, um, and you know you want to be positive with this because it's positive communication, and you want to put your recorder out, and I just say, hey, um, you know, I know you're trying to get a hold of me. Can you please tell me your name? And wait a little bit. Give them time to answer. Remember, they have to drain energy to answer, to form the words. And then just ask them some questions, and again, give them time to answer through each question, and then play it back. You could get some amazing communication. Another way is spiritual photography. We've done spiritual photography, and I've always also taught it over 20 years. And it's amazing what you can get on camera. Spirits will appear if you ask them to. They're amazing. Just say to them, please appear as clear as you can on camera. So, so I can see who you are and take some pictures around the house um, or wherever you're having the haunting. Um, and you might be really surprised what you get. I've had people come to me with unbelievable communication through photo or EVPs and they were so happy that they got it. And it's a very positive way for communication. It's not going to hurt anybody. It's not a negative, you know, and a lot of times they want to appear in camera. They want to talk, so that, that helps. And they want to tell their stories, so that helps. The only thing that matters is time of day. Sunlight does drain spiritual energy. It's harder for them to communicate with you in sunlight. I know even with my channeling sessions, I ask people to only come in at night for them for that reason. Um, you get way better communication um, when it's dark. Um, they're very active. Uh, usually, like a lot of clients will come to me and they'll ask me why they're waking up at 3, 3.30 in the morning. Um, that's their high noon. They're extremely active. That's like noon to us when we're active. We're going out for lunch and, and so forth. Forth, you know that's kind of their high noon um, and that's why they wake you up and they're trying to communicate or they do different things around the house and speaking of houses we promised we'd take a look inside Charlotte's big purple house well purple is a really good color for healing um, purple um, has a higher vibrationary level all color has vibrations as well some are lower than others some are higher and depend on what color is around you can really affect your environment um, health and also your whole electromagnetic field and the reason we went with purple is because I'm really a huge believer in, in healing crystals as well and amethyst is a huge healer it can actually you know wearing an amethyst is very good for you it can actually help heal um, different types of blood problems um, it can help regulate your energy to stabilize if you're very nervous um, it can actually help open your third eye which is your sixth center your penile gland um, amethyst this is very, very good for, for positive communication and positive energy. And we felt the judge was such an amazing person, you know, and, and he um, deserved to have some recognition. So we did the house in purple to show that he had helped so many people and show it in a healing context. And the interior of the house, you, what's the judge think about what you did with the inside of the house? The judge actually loves the inside. I think we did him some justice. We were very careful with it. Um, to do it in, in, a, in a beautiful way that he would have had. I know he had it very, very beautiful and, and kind of elaborate when he was living. And we wanted to, you know, with our budget, <laughs> stay within that frame for him um, and do something that, taking it right back to 1880, what, what he would have had. In closing, Charlotte says the spirits are only here to help and that we should all try to hear them. We really need to start to listen to our loved ones. It, it really could make a big uh, change in how we live in this world and hopefully someday 
you know, there won't be any war. There, there won't be any pain and suffering like there is now. And, and people will start to be more positive and, and come more back to God and, and, and be who we truly are, you know, beings that are supposed to be of healers. I got to say, I found Charlotte to be excellent company as well as a very interesting person with a very interesting ability. Now, she wants me to remind you that if you go see a psychic and they ask you for any more money other than what it costs to do a reading, run. Do not walk. Run away from that person. They are more than likely trying to deceive you and rip you off. For more information about Charlotte, check out her website. There's more information about finding a deceptive psychic, how to spot one of those, as well as information about her and the house and lots of other things as well. If you want a reading, give her a call. The phone number is on your screen. That'll do it for this episode of Metrocasting. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you again after later.